Hey guys, welcome to my animal chit chat vlog. Today I will be talking about how to handle a frog, their behaviour and some nutrition. So picking up a frog, where do we start? So this is the lovely Luna and Neville will be coming out another time. He's very shy so I did choose Luna although she's just as naughty. So I've got my frog. Come on. So I've got my frog on my hand. She's alright at the moment. They're very fast. So if you're looking for a slow pet, then I wouldn't recommend the white tree frog. Although they do sit and they are quite easy to sort of hold. So how would I pick up? If I wanted to pick up from my arm, I would go underneath. There we go. Lifting. Oh, it's quite hard with my left hand. I'm right-handed. I'm right-handed. Yeah, there we go. Picking up from the back. Why don't you pick up from the front, Luna? Do you know? Well, if you pick a frog up from the front, um, they are actually very weak in the area. They're mostly squishy. Most of their, their, the bones and the muscles are in their legs and their back. So you must pick them up from the back. The back, Because if you pick them up from the front, you can really injure them. You can put your hand in front. So if they jump, they will jump on or near your hand. Or they might turn around and jump somewhere else if you're Luna. Um, yeah, so, ooh, see? They jump unexpectedly, but that's okay. Oh, oh, okay. There we go. I still picked her up from the back. And there we go. Oh, again. Again. Again, 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 she says. Um, so a bit about white tree frogs. Their background, so they were actually discovered from somebody by somebody called um, John White in 1760, I believe, and um, he discovered them in Australia. So that's why, even though she's green, they are called white tree frogs. Um, now they are, I would say, they're very good at being handled. Um, most frogs you can't really handle properly. I wouldn't handle these every day. I'd handle these maybe two to three times a week because they do get stressed. But you, you know, they, you can actually sort of tame them. And mine are getting tamer. I find I've only had them for a year, but I find that they are slowly getting tamer. Even though Luna don't like to jump on my shoulder, but they have moments when they do generally want to come out. But they are frogs, so they always want to jump everywhere, or over everywhere. Um, so mine are actually called um, white tree, um, snowflake white tree frogs because they have got the snowflakes on the back. I don't know if you can see them. There we go. A glimpse. A glimpse, Luna. And um, what that is, um, is, so they have like sort of different sort of types of them. So mine's a single snowflake white tree frog. They also have ones that have double so double the amount of snowflakes, um, so double snowflake white tree frog, and they have a blue phase one. They have all different types, but those are the sort of types that you hear about. And they have a blue morph that turns really blue. Hmm. Naughty. Naughty girl! Um, yeah, so they have all sorts of um, um, colours and things and variations. Um, behavior wise I would say they differ so like any animal they sort of differ so Luna is very um, jumpy she's very brave um, she's very lazy um, not when it comes to her food actually like Neville she's sort of very greedy I would say actually not really lazy um, she's greedy um, she's quite sh sort of strong sort of males seem to be Females, sorry, the females tend to be stronger than the males, really, um, in my opinion. Um, Neville is very shy. He doesn't really like being on film. We will change that soon, but I'm not going to go him out today because um, he's asleep. Uh, Luna is more easier to handle. I might introduce you to Neville quickly at the end. Um, we'll see, maybe. I might introduce you in a minute. Um, but Luna's easier to hold because she's... Even though she jumps everywhere, she's, I feel she's more tame than Neville. Neville gets really nervous and jumps almost everywhere on the floor, on the bed, everywhere. So I'm letting her sort of sit on the end of my bed, but without actually going everywhere. So at the moment, she's sort of settled. Um, they So the males croak. How you tell male from female? Females are much larger. 
so she's much larger than Neville. Uh, they have bigger heads. Um, oh, one thing quickly. Can you see? I talk about in my health video, the the eardrum. So they have eardrums instead of just ears. And above that is the ridge. Can you see the ridge? There we go. So she's um nearing overweight. Um, it's quite hard for them to be, but not to be. Um, but she's only slightly overweight, and it's probably the way her head is positioned anyway. Um, it, actually, no, it's not flopping over. <laughs> it's only if it flops over, so she's fine. She's she's fine. Um, yeah, so she's very greedy. Um, so males are they croak is a distinct, you know, it's a distinct, you know, it sort of really distinguishes um the difference between male and female is that the males croak and um, they can croak early. So mine croaked actually last year. Uh, I mean, no, at the beginning of at the end of last year when um a few months after i got them me females do sort of croak but not as insistently and not as much really it's quite rare to hear them croak they make squeaky noises mostly uh, luna does um but males croak really loudly and consistently um never sort of likes to croak when um, i spray with the water thing um he loves that um they for self-defense Tree frogs um, squirt urine at you, which Neville does a lot. Luna does it, but not as much. Neville does it because I think it's just sort of a teenage thing. If I wake him up to give him a health check, I, um, he just squirts wee everywhere and it goes all over me. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's behaviour stuff, general. They're quite, they've got character. So many people think, oh, frogs don't have character, but they do even the things like dark frogs and stuff, I mean, I'd love to keep them, but I'm sure they have character too. Um, I don't know too much about those, but I would love, to, I know you can't really handle them, but watching them is probably amazing. Um, but white trees, tree frogs are my favourite, but tree frogs in general are amazing. I would like to probably get more, but I'm thinking of breeding these lovely guys, so I don't know yet. Um, so I want to just talk about something very important um, before I move on to nutrition and feeding, um, which is how to, before Luna gets antsy, is how to health um, check your frog or sort of any animal really. But um, health checking is very important with your animal because you need to make sure it's safe and healthy. And if you spot something wrong, you can actually sort of prevent it from happening by taking it to the vets. And if, they, if you spot something early, then you can sort of prevent um, your animal from being ill. So we always start from the top. Whoops. So you need to look carefully, and uh, it's quite hard to do because she's a bit stressed. But I will do a quick sort of health check. Hello, darling. So you look at the eyes first. Are they clear? Is there any discharge? The lovely eyes. No discharge, no scratches, no sort of bloodshot red eyes. Brilliant. Um, don't forget the head as well. So is the head got any marks on it? Has it got any sort of scratches? Nope. Moving down to the nostrils. Any Again, any debris, any discharge that's different. I mean, he doesn't get, they don't get discharge really in their nostrils. And then you move to the mouth. Any cuts? Any sores? No. And you move to the feet. The legs. Any sort of cuts? Sores? Bruises? Nope. And then you move to the body. Now, I know about this already, but um, she had a little accident um, with the branch. It stuck into her a little bit. Um, because where she sat was rather silly. Um, so she's got a, bit, a few marks in there, but they will heal. She's had so many before. Um, so, um, whoops. So, um, she's fine, um, and they heal fairly easily. They're quite hardy white, white tree frogs. Yeah, there's only a few little marks there. Um, they look quite painful. Um, they you know, but actually she's all right. They're little scrapes, which she will heal off. So I know about those already because I health check her every day. Um, but they heal when they shed and um, she's fine. She's doing great. I've 
I felt a little bit. Don't touch them too much because they're delicate, but I felt for any sort of oh, broken broken bones. No, everything's in, you know, don't tap it too much. Just sort of give it a soft tap. Yeah. And then sort of the side of the body as well. I can't see anything. Other side. And then the legs. Oh, it's quite hard to do when you're filming as well. But I will do actually how to health check um, in general, not just frogs. Um, or I might do pictures and then I might say, you know, how to do it and um, where to health check from. Um, yeah, so I'll do that in my blog. Um, so next you've got sort of the legs. You check the legs, the back legs, the hind legs. You know, are they, you know, are they moving properly? Are the legs active are they have they got a spring in them or are they limping have they got bone sticking out a sign of metabolic bone disease um are they red sign of red leg sometimes as i said it's a, it's a, it's about stress so don't worry about it um you know uh, you know it's always all about sort of watching their health um uh and the cloaca is there anything cloaca is the, their bum and it's at the back I don't want to put it in my face or the camera because she'd just pee. Um, um, yeah, so um, is there anything stuck in there? Any urate, feces? It's disgusting, but you need to make sure that's all okay too. Um, and yeah, um, you know, make sure that under tummy is not red either. I just can't really show she's getting a bit annoyed. Yeah, I know tummy's fine because I've checked it, but yes, um, it's just sort of about making sure that your animal is, well, you know, it's about movement as well. How do they move and how do they sit? If they sit like this all the time, you know, it's it's uh, obviously a sign of ill health, but if they sit upright and they sort of hop and jump, then it is a very great sign of, you know, they're, they're okay. Um, so I'm going to move on to a bit about nutrition and feeding now and hopefully Luna will stay put for now. Um, so actually I'm going to take Neville out because Luna is stressed enough. So wait, wait a second. Oop. She's jumping back herself. That's amazing. Okay, sweetheart. <laughs> so bear with us because Neville is fairly new to handling. Well, he's not new to handling, he just doesn't particularly like it. And I've just woken up, so he might pee, so if he does, don't worry. Uh, so here he is, little Neville. So we're going to do a bit of feeding now. Yay! You see, he's already jumping. It's okay. So this is a um, bad idea to get Neville out. Uh, he's all nice and warm. Okay, say hi. You're okay. I've got you. Okay, so Repsy safe. Oh, I knew you were going to interrupt. Repsy safe. Um, sorry, not Repsy safe. Repashi. Um, calcium and calcium plus. Um, so they need vitamins, and they need calcium powder. Um, to prevent metabolic bone disease, and um for their sort of growth and their bones and yeah he just peed he just peed you didn't see it you didn't see anything he loves to pee he's a big peer aren't you um so this really helps um with all those things sort of strength of the bones prevents um metabolic bone disease um supplies them with the vitamins they need um so get this stuff some people get side vitamins along with normal calcium powder but i recommend you do get um this because it's got everything and you don't have to worry about buying the right vitamins and stuff so this is great so what i do you can get actually um a little it's gonna jump um you can get oh 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 you're fast you can actually get a little, um, not little, you can actually get a bag and put the, the food in the bag and give it a shake. But I've got a pot because I don't have any bags at home at the moment. So all you've got to do is, um, I've already got a bit of powder in there. You need to shake, um, you need to put the cricket in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Neville, Neville, I'm about to feed you a hopper and you're just being ungrateful. You can do this. Don't be a grumpy teenager, please. They are actually like humans, really. I think. Neville certainly is. So, just sort of... Whoop, let him jump on your shoulder. Okay. So, I just then I just sort of put my hand in front of him because I didn't want him hurting himself. So, I'd rather that happen than him sort of slap bottom, slap forward onto the floor and hurt himself. So, um, yeah, you just sort of get your prey in there. Give it a shake with your hand on top so he doesn't escape. I'm going to give you feed. And then, so mine are on medium crickets. Um, neonates, really babies, would have fruit flies and <sighs> fruit flies um, and micro crickets. Slightly bigger frogs will continue on micro crickets, um, but will have more and... They will go in small, um, small micro crickets or, or hoppers. You can have micro hoppers if you don't like crickets. Um, so micro crickets for really micro crickets for um, neonate frogs, one or two, because it depends on how small they are. It can't be large on the head, larger than the head, otherwise they will choke. Um, and um, for really babies who've just come out of um the sort of tadpole stage i suggest small tiny flies um fruit flies preferably um teenagers like mine i give them sort of three to four hoppers or three to four medium hoppers every um three times a, sorry three times a week they don't need to be fed as much when they are older um when they're younger they need to, they need to be fed <laughs> Thing. Um, they need to be fed approximately every day. <laughs> That's hilarious. You're getting some in a minute. He's just staring at the thing. Um, yeah, so they need to be fed. They need to be fed every um, day if they are neonates. Um, if they are slightly older, they will be fed three times a week. Um, the powder, don't give it to them all the time um, because it can be toxic, um, as I talk about in my video. Phos too much phosphorus, it can cause harm and actually cause metabolic bone disease as well as deficiency of calcium. So, um, yeah, that powder is really important. It does last you a while, actually. This has lasted me a whole year and I've, I've got a couple more, so it will last me even longer and now the hop is hopping away. <laughs> So we're going to feed Neville. He's quite resistant, so give give us a chance. He's doing really well. He's behaving. He's sitting on the bed like a good boy, aren't you? Okay, don't jump away. Yep, okay. Okay, I thought he would. Okay. Ready? Look, look you're going to eat a hopper. Look. Oh, what's this? Oh. Oh. He was just working out his best side there, weren't you? Now I hand feed him. He does get a bit shy in front of the camera though um, because he struggles to eat. Um, I think it's a normal thing for males. Sometimes we're a bit lazy and the females still everything because we dominate, don't we? we um, we're very bossy. There we go. He swallowed it. We're going to do one more, okay? He's a bit shy. Takes him a while to realise. Good. Oh, no, he didn't swallow it. Oh, Neville, nerves. I know. It's nerve-wracking being in an audience. Ready? Yeah. You do it. Give him time. I could give him a waxworm, actually. Would you like a waxworm? Uh, I don't think I have any waxworms left. They love waxworms for treats, but don't give them as a staple food. Staple foods are crickets and hoppers. Um, I wouldn't suggest giving mealworms at all. Some people do, but they can have liver problems if you give them. Um, oh, there we go. One more. I fed you yesterday, really. But yeah, 
There we go. Did you notice when they swallow, they close their eyes? <laughs> there we go. Well done, Neville. Good boy. Shall we do one more? Because I feel they haven't seen anything and I, I just won't mm, do a smaller one. <clears throat> I don't think that's fair. Okay, I think they've seen enough. I don't want to give him too much because, as I said, too much can get, give a be um cause obesity i did feed them yesterday so i don't want to feed them too much but i kind of want to get him ahead of luna and i thought i'd show you <laughs> no more now you're gonna go back now because although you're really sweet you're just gonna jump everywhere aren't you you look i say hello hello gorgeous boy absolutely gorgeous frogs cheeky that's what the lady said. They, she said they're very cheeky, and I'm like, good. I like cheeky animals. Right, you can go back then, darling. You don't be naughty. I got out. Come on. Naughty, naughty, naughty boy. Come on, join your naughty, your naughty um friend. Um. So yeah. Um. I mean, I keep my life feed in something like this um tub uh and i've sort of got sort of things to put food in so you put food in here um and um just sort of keep hoppers in a plastic thing i will go into that in a, another video on how to keep live food so don't worry i just wanted to tell you briefly how to keep them the next important thing i want to know um note is um I think I mentioned this in one of my videos, but I'm going to mention it again, is RepTi-Safe. Um, so it's for, it's for sort of reptiles and amphibians, and it's important for um, sort of their, to put in their water, especially white tree frogs, because um, chlorine is very harmful for, to, them, for, to them, to them, sorry. It's very harmful to their skin. Um, chlorine will sting and actually kill them um it happens with all frogs so um well exotic frogs so you need to use repti safe it will tell you so for example two drops for eight ounces in the water so measure it with a jug easy peasy lemon squeezy um so i'd get a bit of bigger bottle this is a small bottle that i just wanted to use as an example um it's very good it's very good stuff um so always use it. Any water you use to do with frogs, cleaning, um, water bowl, spraying their enclosure for humidity, please use wet So never use tap water for them, okay? Um, so that's it really about for nutrition and handling and behaviour. There's more behaviour stuff on my website. If you feel like I haven't answered any questions, please comment below or please go on my website, www.animalchitchat.com. An animal chit C, it's written in C, not chat, I don't know why I wouldn't let me have chat, dot com, and then you can sort of email me or maybe email, message me on my um, Instagram account, which is at animalchitchat97, and you can follow me on there. I'm also doing some conservation stuff. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Thanks very much um, for listening. Um, and I've covered sort of the basics of behaviour and nutrition and feeding. And I hope that you've um, got to grasp with it. Um, thank you very much and goodbye.